Welcome to the fourth section of chapter 12, which is volume of prisms and cylinders. So we're finally starting into volume. First three sections we covered surface area. The last few sections are all going to be about volume. We're almost at the end of chapter 12. We're right in the middle. So just a few more sections to go. Uh, today's objective, as you could probably guess, we're going to calculate the volume of prisms and cylinders. So the first thing we should probably talk about is, well, what's the difference between the surface area of a figure and the volume of a figure? Surface area is what we've done so far. It's everything on the outside. It's like the wrapping paper. So it's the outside part of the figure. The volume is actually the stuff inside the figure. So how much is inside? Whereas the surface area is just the stuff around the outside. So that I'm sure you've probably learned before, but it was good to talk about. Um, jumping into two postulates. The first one, if two polyhedra are congruent, then their volumes are equal. So if two polyhedra are congruent, so they have all the si same sides and angles, they're going to have the same volume. That should make sense. They're the same figure if they're congruent, or the same shape, that is. The second postulate is the volume of a solid is the sum of the volume of its parts. So all that's saying is if I make a solid by putting together all their solids, I can just add together all their volumes. So if, the, if you look at the figure that we have, we have basically a bunch of building blocks that were put together. So all we have to do in order to find the volume is figure out how many blocks there are. Well, if I look at this upper prism here, I can count that there's four blocks within it. If I look at this one right here, I can count that there's two blocks. So then what's left is this portion along the bottom, which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It has 14 blocks. So then the total volume is going to be 4, add 14, add 2, which is going to be 20 units cubed. Volume is always cubed. Volume is three-dimensional, whereas area is just two-dimensional. So volume is always going to be inches cubed, or units cubed, whatever the units happen to be. So that was kind of just the background to volume. Now we're going to get into really the meat of this section, which is how do you calculate the volume of prisms and cylinders? Well, the first thing that's kind of nice is they have the same formula. So volume is going to be big B multiplied by H. Big B in this case is area of the base. And then H is going to be the height of the figure. So I thought we would just jump in by doing some examples. Example number one, it says name the solid and find its volume. So first of all, for the name, I notice I have two bases. So this is going to be a prism. Both bases are a trapezoid, so this is going to be a trapezoidal prism. Because it's a prism, the volume formula is going to be area of the base multiplied by the height. So starting with the area of the base, the base is a trapezoid. So trapezoid is going to be one half height, base one plus base two. Okay, so the height of my trapezoid is 3. The height is 3 because it connects the two bases. So my bases then are this one right here, the 14, and then the 6. When I simplify this, I get the area of the base to be 30. So now going back to our volume, area of the base, which is 30, times the height. Okay, now I have to be careful about the height here. I'm looking for the height of the prism, not the height of the trapezoid. So the height of the prism is going to be the distance between the two bases. It's going to be the distance between the two trapezoids. In our figure, 5 is the distance between the two trapezoids. So 5 is going to be the height. My volume then is 30 multiplied by 5, which is going to be 150 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that was the volume of prism. 
you will notice prisms tend to be a lot easier than the surface area, which is nice. You just have to find the area of the base and then multiply by the height. So let's look at the next one. Next one says calculate the exact volume of the solid shown. Okay, so this is a cylinder. So volume is going to be area of the base multiplied by the height. Looking at the base, our base is a circle. Okay, area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. And I would like you to continue from here. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Come back only after you have finished the problem. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So I left you with finding the area of the circle, which is going to be pi r squared. So pi times 9 squared. So the area of the base is 81 pi. Now, going back to our volume, area of the base is 81 pi. Now I need to multiply by the height. It's the height of the cylinder, which is 6. When I multiply 81 and 6, I get my volume to be 486 pi feet cubed. And this is the exact answer. I want your answer in terms of pi. That's what I mean by exact. Um, so I don't want you to multiply that out and get a decimal. So hopefully we got that one right. If you didn't, that's okay. It's just practice. Um, we're now going to move on to an example that works backwards. So in this example, you're given a Rubik's Cube, and it says the volume of the given Rubik's Cube is 384 centimeters cubed. Find the side length of the cube. Okay, so we are told that this is a cube. We're told that it's a cube twice. That's important. What's important about a cube is that all of the edges are the same. All the faces are squares. So if I call this side x, this side's also going to be x, and this side's going to be x, all the edges are going to be the same. Okay, a cube is just a special type of prism. So the volume is going to be the area of the base multiplied by the height. Okay, so in this case, our base is a square. So this part right here would be our base. It's a square. Area of the base is length times width, base times height, so it's going to be x times x. And then here would be the height of our prism, because it connects the top to the bottom. So the height is also x. So I get x times x times x equals 384. Okay, so simplifying, x times x times x is x to the third. Okay. So we need to think, before, when we had x squared equals 384, for example, we would take the square root. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. The only difference here is we have x to the third. So what we're going to do is we're going to take something called a cube root. So it looks like a square root, but it has a little 3 out in front. Okay, so x is going to equal the cube root of 384. And this we have to do in our calculator. So if you would take out your calculator, the first thing that I'm going to have you do is hit math. Then you're going to go down to the cube root, which is number 4, and enter in 384, and hit enter. So that's the side length of your Rubik's Cube. The side length of your Rubik's Cube is going to be 7.268. So if I went too fast for you, please make sure that you rewind the video and you see again how to do that cube root function on the calculator. It's just math, and you go on to number four, which looks like a cube root. So that's going to help us work backwards when we're given a volume and we're asked to calculate a length of some type. Okay, so looking on to example number four. Example number four says calculate the volume of the solid shown. So this is called a composite solid because it's two solids put together. We're going to notice that we have a triangular prism. but then we cut out a square prism from it. So it's just like we cut out the middle. So we're going to have to find the volume of the triangular prism, the volume of the square prism, and then we're going to have to subtract them. Both prisms, the volume is going to be area of the base multiplied by the height. Let's start with that square prism because it's going to be a little easier. So 
the base is going to be a square. It's this square right here that I'm talking about. Each side length you can see is 3, so the base is 3 times 3. The height of the prism is the distance between the two bases, between the two squares, which you'll notice is 6. So the volume of our square prism is 3 times 3 times 6, or 9 times 6, which is 54. Okay, so that one was easy. Triangular prism is going to be a little more difficult. Area of our base is going to be a triangle, so it's going to be 1 half base times height. But then I have to multiply by the height of the prism. The height of the prism is still 6. That's the distance between the two triangles. Now, finding the area of the triangle is a little more difficult. I'm going to redraw it, but this is what I have so far. Okay, so the triangle is an equilateral triangle. We just have to assume that. So I know that the base of the triangle is 10, but I need to find the height. This part right here. Okay, so my 10 is split 5 and 5. Okay. I know that this is a 60 degree angle, this is a 30 degree angle, because it's an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So I have 30, 60, 90, L, L root 3, and 2L. Across from the 90 is a 10, across from the 30 is a 5, so then I'm left with 5 root 3. That tells me that my height is 5 root 3. So I can now substitute that in to find the area of the triangle. Okay, so for the triangular prism, I did the area of the base, 1 half base times height, and then I multiplied by the height of the prism, which is 6. Okay, so the volume of that triangular prism is going to end up being 150 root 3. So my volume, my exact volume, is 150 root 3, subtract 54 feet cubed. Now I know a lot of you don't like to leave your answers like that because they don't look very nice, so I'm also going to convert that to a decimal. As a decimal, this gives me 205.81 feet cubed. So that's exact and approximate. So again, what I did is I found the volume of the, the triangular prism, and then I subtracted that square prism in the middle that was cut out. So the triangular prism, I did the area of the triangle, and I multiplied by the height of the prism, which is 6. For the square prism, I did the area of the square, and I multiplied by the height of the prism, which is also 6 which gave me a final answer of 150 root 3 minus 54. Okay, we have two more examples to do, so let's move on to example number 5. Okay, so example number 5 says you have two cubes. The side measure of the larger cube is three times the side measure of the smaller cube. How much bigger is the volume? So I'm going to start by attempting to draw two cubes. Okay, so here's the beginning of my first cube. Sorry, I know that's not the best, but kind of hard to do this on an iPad. So that's my smaller cube. And then I also have a bigger cube. Okay, so the question says, the side measure of the larger cube is three times the side measure of the smaller cube. I don't know the smaller cube, so I'm going to call all the sides x. So I have x, x, and x. The larger cube is three times bigger, so I'm going to have 3x, 3x, 3x. How much bigger is the volume of the larger cube? So the question is thinking that you're going to say 3. If the sides are three times bigger, the volume is three times bigger. But it doesn't exactly work like that. Let's find the volumes. So for the volume of the smaller cube, I'm going to do the area of the base. My base is this square, so it's going to be x times x. And then I'm going to multiply by the height of the prism, which is also x. So the smaller cube is x to the third. Then for the volume of the larger cube, my base, again it's a square, so it's going to be 3x times 3x. And then the height of the prism is also 3x. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. x times x times x is x to the third. So the volume of my smaller cube is x to the third. The volume of my larger cube is 27x to the third. So there's a difference of 27. 
So how much bigger is the volume of the larger cube? It's 27 times bigger. So if the sides change by a factor of 3, the volume is going to change by a factor of 27. Okay, so we have almost come to the vid end of our video on volume, for prisms and cylinders, that is. The objective was to calculate the volumes of prisms and cylinders. You can see the example to the right. It says find the volume of the prism. Okay, so volume of a prism is the area of the base multiplied by the height. And this is where I leave you. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to make sure that you have this problem completed. Good luck.